Yo, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to be bringing to you my thoughts on who you should be taking for the new 8th inning program that just dropped today. Not too long ago, it was a push to button stream. SDS had a stream and they revealed the 8th inning bosses and then they also just pushed the button at the end of the stream. So we got all the content on Thursday instead of Friday, which is awesome. We love new content. Uh, and we love using new content and we love grinding for new content. Well, some of us like grinding for new content. However, I'm not one of those in the community that likes to grind for new content. I just wait till somebody grinds it and puts it on the market and I'm going to probably overpay for it, but it is what it is. Um, so we'll talk about the eighth inning program. First, we're going to talk about the 150 star pack and the three future stars cards in there. And then we'll talk about the last, the final pack that, the important pack, 300 star one, where you have Kershaw, Ty Cobb, and Pudge. So um, I'm going to get into it, but before we do, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn those notifications on, leave a like on the video, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, I want you to leave your comments about the 8th inning program and who you're going to be choosing and why in the comment section below, and we'll have a discussion about it. Um, also, if you haven't checked me out live streaming on Twitch, make sure you do my link to my Twitch channel will be in the description below. Along with my Twitter handle, make sure you follow me on Twitter. And my Twitter handle will be in the description below as well. But without further ado, let's get into this eighth inning program. Talk about who you should be taking. So, first we'll talk about um, how you can get the collections. Of course, you get the 75 inning voucher if you collected all three of the seventh inning program bosses. Then you got to do collections. You can do award series, 12 award series players, and it gets you another 20 stars. And then you can do the award, the program, the new player program, which is the Gold Glove Tory Hunter. You finish that, that's another 20 stars right off the bat. That's a good amount of stars. And you have your dailies, of course, exchange or whatever uh, the mission is. And then your other ones here that you can do as well for more stars. Just so many stars be given away. Then you got your missions, win 10 ranked games, win 10 games, whether it's ranked, battle royale, or events. Tally 10 extra base hits with award series players. And then... Tally total of 10 bases with Tory Hunter uh, online, online though. You can't do it offline, it has to be online. Then you have your Conquest map, which there's a bunch. Of, they said there's 17 hidden packs in the Conquest map. That's freaking crazy. And if you complete that, that's going to be 30 uh, more stars. And then you've got your Showdown, which is 70 stars. So you could probably get this done right away if you really wanted to. Uh, we'll get back into it. And then... You're going to have your 150 pack stars, which includes three future stars players. The first one's Ian Anderson, second Sean Murphy, and then Mitch Keller. Uh, this is actually, I don't think I've seen a henchman pack with 96 overalls before. So as we've seen, the henchman pack is starting to go up in uh, overall. And maybe, who knows, when it gets to the 10th inning program, because I'm sure they'll have the extra inning program, maybe we'll see a henchman pack with not all three of the cards being 99 and you'll have six cards with 99 but hey we're not there yet we're talking about the eighth inning right now so first we're going to talk about ian anderson so future stars pitcher for the braves and this card everybody had been saying where's this card where's this card because they showed it on the first light or when they revealed the future or prospect series cards and whatnot and he was supposed to get a prospect series if i'm not mistaken but they just decided to give him a future stars He's in, the, he's in the league now, and he pitched really well. He's been pitching really well since coming up with the Braves. Uh, he's got a 14, 12, 6 changeup sinker. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a slider, so I don't think he's going to be very effective, although I do believe his per nines are really nice. At 99 stamina, 99 hit per nine, and 102k per nine, so basically 100 versus both. Then he's got 79 walk per nine and 87 control, so not terrible control, but not not the, not the worst control, but not the best control. And then he's got 8-3 below and 97 break. So he's not overpowering by any means. And his break on his pitches are pretty decent. Again, he only has the 12-6 and change up his off-speed pitches. I don't think that's going to play. So I don't think Ian Anderson's a must-get. Unless, well, never mind. They're all future stars. These all cards should help you towards the MVP Trout Collection. Then you got Sean Murphy, a catcher. 96 overall. He's got 93 Contact versus right, 96 contact versus left with 91 power and 80 power versus left. So he meets the power threshold of 80 or better versus both. And he's kind of, he's a reverse splits guy when it comes to the power. 80 vision, and then he's got 90 fielding, so diamond defense, 98 arm strength, 90 block, 
absolute cannon behind the plate and absolute great and a great fielder unfortunately they literally just dropped pudge and mike piazza this week so kind of takes away from his value however if you're looking to build a uh future stars team team build not a bad catcher to go with, although there is Joey Bart, which I think is better. So Sean Murphy is not a terrible card. Um, I think I think he's probably the best one in the program just because Ian Anderson just doesn't do it for me. And then Mitch Keller, another 96 overall starting pitcher. You got 100 stamina with 90 hit per nine and 100 K per nine. Again, good per nines. 92 walk per nine, 89 control. So a guy that has really good control as a starting pitcher. And then he's got 84 below and 96 break. His four seems at 96, slider 88, curveball at 79, and then a changeup at 85. He doesn't have a sinker or a cutter. We know we love those pitches, and unfortunately he doesn't have it. However, I do think he's probably going to be a little bit better than Ian Anderson because his, he's probably going to be able to um, control his pitches better for one. And then for two, he throws a little bit harder, and then he also has a slider unlike Ian Anderson that just has a curveball and a changeup. So I think... Uh, one through three, you got Sean Murphy as the number one card in this pack. Then Mitch Keller is number two. And then Ian Anderson is last, unfortunately, because he doesn't have another of uh, the fifth pitch. He doesn't have a fifth pitch, and the pitches that he has are decent. Or, well, he has a sinker, but that's the best thing he has. And honestly, he's not going to fool many, many players with the pitches he has. So now let's get into the good stuff. I know this is what you're waiting for, and let's get into it. Uh, we got 300 star pack. You got Kershaw, Ty Cobb, and Pudge as the cards that were revealed today. So these cards uh, look pretty good, actually. So first we'll talk about Pudge. And it's his 1999 year, which was actually his MVP year, but they decided to go with his gold, with a gold glove because he also won a gold glove. And that was the award that he won most in his career and what he was known for. He was a great defensive catcher who could also hit, but... Most importantly, he was just amazing defensively. So he's going to have 115 contact versus right, 112 contact versus left, 93 power versus right, and 87 power versus left. So a little bit different than last year's signature series. Uh, the contact is still pretty similar. However, he does have more power, which we love to see. Especially against righties, we're going to face more righties than lefties. He's got 93 power. So he's, kind of, he's a reverse splits guy, has more contact and more power, which is nice to see. He also has 105 vision, but we know that the contact rating is the most important. And then he's got 97 fielding, 99 arm strength, 92 block. I mean, absolute beast behind the plate. And then he also has pretty good speed for a catcher at 68 speed. We know Pudge was had decent wheels for a catcher. Um, so we know that this card's going to be able to prestige, so he gets a plus three boost. So he'll end up with a 118 contact for right, 115 versus left, 90 six power versus right and 90 power versus left so 90 power versus both love to see it 108 vision and then he's gonna have 99 R, uh 99 fielding and 95 block once he gets to uh prestige with 71 speed that's pretty rare to see with a catch with 71 speed but um as an all-around catcher he's definitely the best all-around catcher unfortunately he's not i don't think he's better than piazza hitting wise piazza just blows him out of the water yes he has more contact versus right but the power Piazza beats him. I mean, he's maxed out versus left, and then versus right, he has he's gonna end up having uh, almost 10 more power with 105 compared to 96 if you do choose to use Pudge and then eventually prestige him. So I'm an offensive guy. I'm gonna take Piazza, but Pudge is not a bad. He's not. He's the second best catcher in the game right now. He's not a bad guy that you can go with. If you want that defense and throw everybody out, go with Pudge. So he's not gonna hit poorly either. So the only bad thing about Pudge is that he is 5'9". He's a little on the shorter side, so he's going to be kind of tough when it comes to actually uh, picking up pitches because we know that uh, <clears throat> shorter guys are definitely tougher to pick up pitches from, but he does stand a little bit tall, so that should help him. So next, we're going to talk about Ty Cobb. This year, they decided to go with a prime card. As compared to last year, they went with a signature series card. Uh, this year, they went with a prime, so... They gave him a bump in the power rating. We're talking about his uh, attributes now. So he's got the maxed out contact just like last year, 125, 125. But this year, as compared to last year, he has 90 power versus both. Last year, he only had 81 versus right and 82 versus left. Uh, he only has 114 vision this year, which last year he had the 125, but it's fine. Nobody really cares about the vision when it's that high anyway. Uh, you got 89 fielding, so he's almost a diamond defender. 
And then he's got 73 arm. Yes, the arm is kind of poopy with 95 reaction and 99 speed. So the guy's an absolute speed demon on the bases. He can He's going to hit for power this year with that 90 power. And uh, he's got great contact. And also, the one thing about Ty Cobb I could say is that he has one of the fastest swings in the game. So you should not get blown by by any means. I will say this, though. He gets the prestige. So he's going to have even more power at 93 versus both. That's a huge boost. From last year over 10 that's amazing he's gonna be able to hit dongs this year on a consistent basis in my opinion and then he gets a boost in the fielding department so he goes from 89 to 92 he's gonna have that diamond shield in center field which he did not have last year and then he also gets a little bit of boost on the arm almost 80 arm strength at 76 so it shouldn't be terrible and then obviously the speed maxed out anyway this card is a really nice card I think he's probably the second best card with uh, Pudge being Pudge is probably the worst card out of all of them. I mean, it's a toss-up between him and him and him and Ty Cobb are probably, you know, they're hand in hand. It just depends on what you need. There, I wouldn't say they're worse. It's worse. Any which card is worse? However, they're just a toss-up. Uh, it depends on your preference and what you actually need. If you want to go with Piazza, you're not gonna really want to probably have. You're not gonna have Pudge. There's nowhere to play him. You know, so. Just depends on what you need. Then the last card, which I think is the best card in this program, is another starting pitcher that we needed in this game. Is Cy Young playing Kershaw. As we know, last year he was there since the beginning, but it was a signature series, and he was a pain in the ass. Obviously, by the end of the year, everybody saw him, and they were pretty used to him. But now, we haven't seen him all year, so he might be a little bit of a pain in the ass this year. Um, and this year they decided to go with a Cy Young, his 2014 Cy Young year. So they gave him 113 stamina, 102 hit per nine, 110 K per nine, 98 walk per nine, and 93 control with 76 velocity, 99 break. We know that Clarkshaw has always had great break on his pitches. So he's going to be at a prestige plus three on everything. So he's going to end up with over 100 on the walk per nine department, 96 control. You should be able to absolutely dot with this man and just you know, hit the corners and whatnot. And then he's gonna get a velocity bump. So right now, as it stands, as a regular diamond, he has 94 speed on his fastball right now. Should be 94 to 96, probably bump 97. Then his slider is 88, uh, 12, six at 72, change ups at 85, and then a sinker at 92. But then with that plus three bump, you should be seeing that fastball at 95 to 97 consistently and probably can bump 98 once in a while. Then the slider's probably going to be a little bit harder too. Curveball will be a little bit slower, so will the changeup. And the sinker will also be a little bit harder. So right now, I think his, his sinker is probably going to be anywhere between um, 92 to 94, bump and 95. But when you get that sinker uh, velocity bump, it's going to be 93 to 95, and 90, it probably hit 96. Uh, probably like 93 to 96, actually, and probably can hit 97 on a rare occasion. So... Again, I think he's the best one. We needed another starting pitcher. We still think there's some starting pitchers that can come out that can be very effective and can be top five. I think he automatically gets bumped into the top five for starting pitchers, especially when you prestige him. He's going to have that plus three bump. So, uh, again, Kershaw's going to probably be... No, he will be in my rotation. He's going to be replacing James Paxton. So, um, we're going to love to see that. And let me see his quirks real quick. So, we're going to talk about a little bit of quirks. Okay, so he doesn't have it. There's actually a quirk in the game where you can recover faster, which we need. Um, we need more of those guys because we know with the 50% drop off, and then on top of that, that they added the stamina in the game. And I feel like they're just not the starting pitcher are just not replenishing fast enough to catch up with that stamina drop. But anyways, um, Kershaw doesn't have that doesn't have that quirk, so it doesn't even matter. But still, at the end of the day, Kershaw is going to be nasty. He's going to be able to throw. A complete game with that 113 stamina so we're gonna love to see him on the mound but anyways guys hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope this helps you choose or make a choice on which boss you want again as always make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already turn the notifications on leave a like on the video if you have any questions leave in the comment section below also make sure you leave a comment on who you're going to be choosing for the eighth inning program and let me know if this video helped you uh decide on who you want lastly make sure you Follow me on Twitch and catch me live streaming. The link to my Twitch channel will be in the description below. And along with that, my uh, my Twitter handle will be in the description below. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. All right, guys? Appreciate you guys watching. Until the next one, peace.